Ready to save time, money and have the best cruise of your life? In this video, I'm going to share 10 Royal Caribbean tips that will help you do just that. Hi there, my name's Ben and I've sailed with Royal Caribbean almost 30 times. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips that will help you save time, money and make the most of your cruise experience. So whether this is your first cruise or your hundredth cruise, these tips are for you. Tip number one is to choose your ship wisely. Each vessel offers a completely different experience, so don't assume all Royal Caribbean ships are the same. Research the different types of ships. The newer and bigger ships tend to have many more activities and features, such as water slides, ice skating arenas, floor riders, more dining options and better kids clubs. The older ships have less of these things. We're actually going to make a video just dedicated to all of the different types of Royal Caribbean ships soon, so make sure you subscribe. But we do recommend that you check out the ship before booking to make sure it has everything you want and need. We find that the best family-friendly Royal Caribbean cruise ships are the Oasis class ships. Now these are the biggest cruise ships in the world. This includes Wonder of the Seas, Oasis of the Seas, Allure, Harmony and Symphony of the Seas. The Quantum class of ships are really fantastic too and include so much food and entertainment. We see them as a slightly more grown-up version of the Oasis class ships. Ships in this class include Quantum, Ovation, Spectrum, Anthem and Odyssey of the Seas. The older ships are much more traditional and smaller, so you're going to find them a little bit more laid back and relaxing, but there's still plenty on board to do. We just always recommend checking the ship you're booking to make sure it matches you. Number two is consider the type of cabin that best suits your needs, whether it be an inside, outside, balcony or suite. First of all, consider the location. Avoid cabins above and below and next to public areas because these can be really noisy. If you have a cabin above the theatre, you're going to hear a lot of noise when they're rehearsing and whilst the shows are going on. So we recommend checking the deck plan. You can find these online very simply by typing the name of the ship, then deck plan, checking the decks above and below and all around you just to make sure there's nothing that's going to make any noise, like being too close to an elevator, for example. These can be very noisy. If you don't plan to spend much time in your cabin, or you're not bothered about seeing the sea, an inside cabin can save you a lot of money. These are the cheapest type of cabins usually. There really isn't any wrong cabin to pick, but there's definitely cabins that will enhance your cruise experience. For example, we love a balcony cabin, so we can open those doors, get that fresh sea air and listen to the sea. Ocean view cabins, cabins with a window for example, are cheaper than a balcony cabin, but still offer you a view of outside. And you should watch out for some of the unique inside cabins that you'll find on Royal Caribbean. They have views into areas such as the Royal Promenade, Central Park, but they're classed as inside cabins, but have a view into the area of the ship. It's pretty cool. It's like being at a hotel resort. All of the cabins come with the same basic amenities like a television, private bathroom, safe, fridge and sitting areas and most cabins will allow the beds to split to either queen or twin configuration. Personally we like cabins in the middle of the ship and lower down as they're going to experience the least amount of movement so the least chance of seasickness. Cabin towards the front and the back of the ship as well as higher up cabins will feel the most movement. Now the suites, some of the bigger suites come with extra benefits such as a bigger cabin, and better amenities and you could get access to sweet only areas and private restaurants like the coastal kitchen. The biggest and most expensive suites come with their own butler. Royal Caribbean call them genies but expect to sell a few children and remortgage your house for one of these as they're very very expensive. Royal Caribbean has a whole array of different cabins so check them out before you book and pick the one that's right for you. Number three is to book as early as you can. Prices typically rise with demand as more people reserve available cabins, so book early. Cruises are now being released up to two years ahead of time. The best types of cabin and locations tend to sell out first. If you're looking to save some money, cruise off season for the best value. So outside of holiday periods when the kids are off school, you usually get a much better price for this. But if you are very flexible and you're not really bothered about the itinerary or type of cabin you want, you can still bag some last minute deals, so never count that out too. But you do get the best selection if you book early. 
Number four, and a really important one, is to familiarise yourself with the Royal Caribbean app for planning your cruise whilst on board and before the cruise even starts. The app is a must-have and can be downloaded on the Apple and Android stores. The app is tied to so much of the cruising experience. It allows you to check in, book entertainment, book shore excursions as well as packages, and check in early so that you have the best pick of boarding times. So when you check in, you'll be able to select a boarding time. The earlier boarding times go fast, so make sure you grab an early one you'll get a few extra hours on the ship, which is always great. And whilst you're on the cruise, the app is really handy too. You can see things like ship maps, look at what daily activities are going on, see what time everything is open, and even view your cruise bill. There's no need to buy an internet package to use the app. Once connected to the ship's Wi-Fi, it will ask if you just want to use the app only. And there's also a text chat option on there as well, so you can use it to text other people you are traveling with. Now, what's great is now this is free. It used to be $1.99 per person per day, but Royal Caribbean have just made it free, which is great. Number five is to pack your carry-on luggage correctly. Make sure you keep all important things like medicine, passports, IDs, and documentation with your hand luggage. Do not pack that into your suitcase. And pack a swimsuit so you can swim straight away. Far fewer people are in the pools at this time. And we recommend that you pack a change of clothes as well, just in case your suitcases take a while to arrive so you've got something to wear on the evening. Number six is that you can carry on water, soda and wine. If you didn't already know, you can bring up to 12 bottles or cans of non-alcoholic beverages per stateroom with you on embarkation day. And you can also bring up to two bottles of wine or champagne per stateroom, up to 750 millilitres each, just as long one guest is of legal drinking age. And corkscrews will be provided for guests by your stateroom attendant for free to enjoy your drinks in your stateroom. But if you do want to drink this wine or champagne in public, there will be a corkage fee of $15 per bottle, which is still cheaper than most of the bottles of wines on board. But make sure you pack any drinks into your carry-on luggage and not into your check luggage or they will be confiscated. Beer and liquor is strictly not allowed to be carried on board, but do know if you buy any bottled alcohol on board in one of the shops on board or in a port of call, or if you bring more than is permitted to be brought on on boarding day, you're going to have these items taken away from you and they'll be safely stored by the ship. These bottles will be returned to you on the last day of your cruise to take home and enjoy. Number seven is to avoid long lines on embarkation day. So first of all is arriving at your boarding time window. So you can't turn up early as they will turn you away. They do have a look at your C pass to see what time you've checked in. Don't worry if you're late or you're past your boarding time. Just make sure you get on before the ship stops boarding. Also, don't eat at the buffet once you get on board because it's going to be absolutely packed. This is where everybody tends to flock to and it's completely chaotic. So try Sorrento's Pizza, Cafe Promenade, Park Cafe, Cafe 270, depending on your ship. These areas are much, much quieter usually. And it's a great time to try out some of the signature activities. You're going to find lower wait times such as the sky pad, Flow rider, climbing walls, zip lines, slides, and more. These areas tend to be a lot quieter on boarding day, so you can check them all out without having to queue. Also, if you need to visit the guest relations desk, avoid it if you can on day one, as it's always very, very busy. You can even try coming back another day or calling from your cabin. It can often be much quicker than waiting in long lines. Number eight is the dress codes. It's important to know what is expected. One thing that we love about sailing with Royal Caribbean is how relaxed it is. It's not a traditional cruise line with stuffy dress codes. There are three types of dress codes you will see, and they are usually only for evenings. During the day, it's just normal beach resort wear. Swimwear must be kept to the pool deck only at all times, and you can't go shirtless inside at any point. You also cannot be barefoot inside either. So the number one type of dress code is casual. It just means super relaxed. So jeans, polos, sundresses and blouses. Shorts are welcomed for breakfast and lunch and we've had no problem wearing them at dinner either. If you're wondering how to find out what type of dress code it is that evening, you'll be able to find out in the daily planner. So just check it out there. The next one is smart casual. 
This is dress to impress with collared shirts, dresses, skirts and blouses or pantsuits. Jackets, sports coats and blazers are also welcomed. And finally, there's formal nights. This is suits and ties, tuxedos, cocktail dresses or evening gowns. Now, if you don't want to dress up, don't worry. You can almost wear anything to the buffet or any of the quick service dining areas. You can also get away with smart dark jeans on formal night too. Now, how many formal nights will there be, I hear you ask? Well, on three to five night cruises, you'll usually have one formal night. Six to seven night cruises, you'll usually find two nights. Eight to ten, also two nights. And on those longer 11 to 14 night cruises, there'll usually be three formal nights. Next up, number nine, is to research ports and excursions before your cruise even begins. Before you sail, check what you would like to do in each port. We always check TripAdvisor for a list of the top things to do in each port. We then put a plan together of what we're going to do. Checking the prices of excursions, local taxis, Ubers or even public transportation. Doing shore excursions with third-party land-based excursion companies is often so much cheaper by up to 60% than booking ones on the ship. But the most important thing is just make sure you get back to the ship in time because unlike ship booked shore excursions, doing something on your own or with a third party does not guarantee the ship will wait for you. So if you're late, the ship will not wait. We're not telling you not to book ship excursions because they are great for ensuring you get back to the ship on time, especially those long excursions. But do bear in mind, you can save an absolute fortune if you do it yourself. So number 10 is a few money saving ideas with Royal Caribbean. The speciality restaurants on Royal Caribbean are quite pricey, but they are a really fantastic thing to do. So if you want to save a little bit of money, eat in a specialty restaurant at lunchtime on a sea day because they are much cheaper. We do recommend pre-booking any packages on the cruise planner before sailing. So things like meal packages, drinks packages, the internet, they are always much cheaper on the cruise planner. So if you log into your Royal Caribbean account, check every two or three weeks because they do change sales every few weeks and book it there before you get on the ship. It's often much cheaper. We also recommend putting your phone into aeroplane mode, even when connected to the Wi-Fi, to avoid any roaming charges. We've had this in the past where we've seen people being charged six, seven hundred dollars for having their phone on. It was downloading everything in the background on the ship's network which is so expensive so make sure you turn it on to aeroplane mode next up if you want to save a pretty penny why not book a guaranteed cabin now this is where you know the type of cabin such as a balcony or an inside cabin but you don't know what deck it's going to be on or the location on the ship just the type but it can save you a lot of money so if you're willing to take that risk and you're not really bothered about where your cabin is it's a great option we've done it before and saved a fortune Another great tip is to book your next cruise with Royal Caribbean on board. You get better deals and extra onboard credit. We've often had two, three hundred dollars more onboard credit whilst booking on board, so it's a great option to save some money as well. We really hope you enjoyed this video, all the tips about Royal Caribbean. If you've got any really good Royal Caribbean tips, let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. Please do hit that subscribe button and the like button. It really helps us out to bring even more free content to you and a huge thank you to our patrons as well our patrons donate a little bit of money every single month so that we can do extra cruises and bring you more videos free but we give you loads in return too such as extra episodes behind the scenes episodes early access and ad free access to our videos a monthly zoom call postcards and much much more if you want to consider helping us and becoming a patron check out the link in the description section below thank you so much I guess that's it. See you next time.